Hello, Darren Cross here. Welcome to the lecture for Chapter 15, Business 149, Business Math. This is where we're kind of, um, this is probably the most practical thing having to do with what we've been learning over the past several weeks, which is uh, the interest and principle concept rolled into something that almost everybody is dealing with in one way or another, and that is home ownership. Um, even if you are renting, you may think that this doesn't apply to you, but it actually does because um, somebody owns that house and somebody probably has a mortgage on that house. Um, the, the types of problems that we're going to work in this chapter are the exact problems that I had to uh, work on the real estate exam when I was a real estate broker way back when. Um, but we're just going to dive into the things that are most important and we're going to put in uh, to play the, the formula that we've been using this whole time, which is interest equals principal times rate times time. We're going to learn how all of that stuff uh, impacts mortgages. So let's dig in a little bit here. Um, so first of all, let's talk about the types of mortgages. Uh, let's talk about what a mortgage is. A lot of people think that in reality, a mortgage is your house note. That really isn't true. Um, the mortgage is actually an instrument uh, that secures the, the uh, home loan that you have, right? So what's happening is the bank loans you money and the mortgage is the actual instrument that actually ties up or encumbers the ownership of your home. In other words, they, they put a lien on your home essentially that says uh, nothing can happen with this home. This home cannot be sold without this mortgage being paid off, right? So their deal is you can't do anything with this uh, until you've paid us back. So the mortgage is really the the, the security piece that actually secures your home. Let's talk about um, the types of mortgages that are out there. So most often we see a 30-year fixed mortgage. And that is, what we like about that is once you get that mortgage, it's done. That's your house payment for the next 30 years. So you have 360 payments of that, okay? Um, the problem with that is if interest rates change and they, and they actually lower, you're stuck with those payments unless you refinance your house. Um, so there's ups, there's downs, there's pros and cons. 15-year mortgage is just half. It's, it's usually uh, one half of the term of a 30-year fixed mortgage. But what we'll see later is that it saves a significant amount of interest over the course of that loan. Graduated payment uh, mortgage is a payment where, or is a mortgage where the payment goes up over the course of time. The beauty of that is that, um, you know, if people are just starting their careers, like if you're a physician or an attorney or an accountant, then you know that your, that your uh, income is going to go up. So you want to get this house, but you can't afford it now. The beautiful thing about a graduated payment mortgage is that the payments start low, but then they get higher and higher over the course of the low. Um, the thing with that, though, is that because of the um, uh, the variable nature of that or because of the uncertain nature of that, uh, the interest rates are typically higher on those. Biweekly mortgage shortens the term of the loan because what's happening is you're paying every other week. And because you're paying every other week, you end up paying an extra month every year, right? Because if you pay once a month, you pay for 12 months. But 12 months is 48 weeks, right? But in reality, we have 52 weeks in a year. Um, so, you know, when you pay bi-weekly, you're paying more than twice a month, right? You're paying every other week. So you actually end up making 26 payments instead of what you think it would be, which is 24. So it ends up paying your loan off uh, quicker. Um, adjustable rate mortgage is a, it's kind of like the graduated payment mortgage, but what's happening here is that the rate usually starts low and the rate can change and go up. Um, and a lot of same kind of a thing. If you know that you uh, if you know that you want to um, that your income is low now, but it's going to get higher then this is a this is a good thing. Um, usually with an adjustable rate mortgage, um, it's not for 30 years. Uh, it's usually for a shorter term. And what happens is at some point you have to refi because the balloon is coming due. Right. So. It'll be, you know, you'll have an adjustable rate mortgage for five years, and then they say, hey, this adjusts. And if you want to think back to 2009, which is a, a an era that hurt my heart because I was living great, riding a real estate boom. Uh, uh, but what happened is a lot of people started to foreclose on their homes because their adjustable rate mortgages were coming due. 
and they they adjusted into a fixed rate mortgage that was much higher. Adjustable rate mortgages tend to have a lower rate in the beginning. And then, you know, five, seven years down the line, they say, hey, that 2% interest loan is going to now be 7% interest. And so, you know, people who were paying $600 on their house were now paying $1,800. And it's, you know, kind of crazy. Uh, home equity loan is typically um, a second mortgage. So if you if you own a house that's $100,000 and your mortgage is down to $50,000, you have $50,000 in equity. That's not doing you any good just sitting there. A lot of people feel great that their house is paid off because their deal is nobody can kick me out and I'm never going to be homeless. But that equity is not doing you anything. So many people borrow on that equity. So it's like getting a second mortgage. So you have that orig original mortgage on 50000 and now you get a second mortgage on that equity, which allows you to do some things. You can do anything you want with that money because uh, it's just going to go directly into your pocket. And a lot of people fix up their house. They fix their roof. You know, they get appliances and things like that. Um, Interest-only mortgage. This is another thing that happened back in the early 2000s. People were getting mortgages where they only paid interest instead of principal and interest. So, of course, what that allows you to do is it allows you to afford more house because you're not paying the principal as well. But at some point, um, that principal comes due. So after five, seven, ten years, uh, something happens and now your interest only mortgage, which might have been three hundred dollars a month, is now two thousand. Uh, so that also contributed to the, the real estate crash. Um, but these are types of mortgages and. For our purposes, we're really going to be using that 30-year mortgage, okay? And in order to figure out what the payment is on a 30-year mortgage, we have to use the amortization table. Now, remember a couple of videos back, we talked about the fact that an amortization or an amortized payment is a payment that includes principal and interest. And so what we're trying to figure out is instead of going through this rigmarole, we use a chart to figure out if we borrow a certain amount of money, how much is our payment going to be just for principal and interest? This doesn't include all of the other stuff, which we'll talk about in a little bit. We're only talking about principal and interest. And the way the chart works in this chapter is that um, it helps you figure out what the payment is for each $1,000 that you borrow. So here are the steps. Number one, you divide the amount of the mortgage, the amount you're actually borrowing by $1,000, because we're saying how many $1,000 are we borrowing, right? Um, but you wanna make sure that you're only doing the amount that you're borrowing. We're not borrowing down payment money. So go back to the chapter where we're trying to figure out the amount finance. You subtract the price of the thing you or you subtract the down payment from the price of the thing, right? So if I have a $100,000 house and I put 10% down, I'm putting 10,000 down. I'm not borrowing 100,000, I'm borrowing 90,000. So my mortgage is 90,000 in this case, um, in that case. Um, so you have to remember that you take that down payment out first, and then you divide by a thousand. So in that scenario, ninety thousand dollars divided by a thousand is ninety. So my payment is a certain amount per thousand, but I have ninety of those. So you'll see how that comes into play. So we look up the rate and term on the amortization chart, and you'll get your table factor, which is your payment per thousand. And then you multiply step one. So what you get here, you multiply by this table factor. So let's look at this right here. This is saying 805. What are we saying? We're saying that our payment is at 9% for 30 years is $8.05 for each $1,000 that we borrow. In my scenario, we borrowed 90. So in order to figure out your payment, you would say 805 times 90. But let's look at this scenario. Gary bought a home for $200,000. He made a 20% down payment. The 9% mortgage is for 30 years. So there's going to be 30 years times 12, 12 months uh, is 360 payments total. What is this monthly payment and total cost of interest? So going back, his total payment, 9%, 30 years, he's going to pay 805 per thousand. But how many thousand is he borrowing? You could say, well, 200. No, he put 20% down, right? 20% of 200,000 is 40,000. So he put... 40,000 down. So how much is he borrowing? Only 160,000. So you go through the steps, divide the amount of the mortgage by 1,000, 160,000 divided by 1,000 is 106. Then you go to the chart 
nine and 30 years is eight dollars and five cents per thousand there's or i said 106 160 there's 160 of them so what you do is this is doing all the stuff we just did so 80 percent. this is the amount that he is financing right after the 20 percent down payment so he's only financing 160,000. Divide that by 1,000, you get 160. Go to the chart, it's 805. Multiply 160 times 805 and you get 1288. That is the amortized payment. That's principal and interest, okay? Now we also wanna know what's the total cost of interest? Well, the total cost of interest, if you go back, we look at all of our payments, we have 360 of them. So 1288 times 360, that's how much we paid total, but then we take out how much we borrowed because that's the principal and the rest must be what? Interest. So that's what we do. That's the formula, right? Total interest is the total of all monthly payments minus the amount of the mortgage. What's the total of all monthly payments? Well, 1288 times 12 times 30 or times 360 is $463,680. But we borrowed, we only borrowed 160,000. So we're paying back what we borrowed and all of the extra is interest. So when you borrow $160,000 over the course of 30 years at 9%, you end up paying back the 160 plus 303,000. So you more than twice pay for that house, which is crazy, right? So that's the total interest. Now, computing total monthly payment, um, would we include, this is called PITI, would we include uh, taxes and insurance? So you have the principal and interest, which is that amortized payment, but you also need to take into consideration taxes and insurance, okay? So what you do is you say, okay, we know what the, what the principal and interest is. So in our case, it was 1288. Now we determine one twelfth of the property tax, so whatever your tax is for that county, Later on, we're gonna learn how to figure out taxes, um, but, and it's, it varies for, depending upon where you are, but you figure out the taxes for that property for that county, and if there's a municipal uh, multiplier there, and then you figure out the insurance, and you divide them by 12, because that's gonna be what you pay each month, okay? So you add all of these things together, and you get your whole payment, what your payment is going to be. Now, don't write this down because this isn't really, this is just extra, but most of the time also, there's something called private mortgage insurance. And so if you don't have enough of a down payment, you have to pay another amount on top of this just to insure, to help the mortgage company feel comfortable. Uh, it's an insurance policy in case you default. And what happens is that insurance policy actually pays that loan for them. And uh, that's something that you have to pay for unless you're a veteran, and then you don't have to pay for that anymore. So when we look at this, um, all the things we talked about, so the PITI payment, principal, interest, taxes, and insurance is 1288, which is the monthly payment, the PITI, or the, the principal and interest payment, plus the tax and insurance divided by 12. So it's 1288 plus 326. The total payment, is 614 or 1614.92. Now let's look at what interest rates really do to the monthly payments. So we're not talking about PITI, we're only talking about principal and interest here. This interest rate is 9% and you pay 303,000. At 11%, you pay an extra $85,000 on that loan over the course of 30 years. Imagine what would happen if you go this way. Right now, interest rates are like three, four percent, right? So you can your payment will be dramatically different here. And that means that you can really afford more house. If you can afford twelve eighty eight or you know it's gonna be that sixteen hundred dollars, well, if this interest rate is half of this, then your this is gonna be half and you're gonna save a tremendous amount of money. So your payment is really gonna be about a thousand dollars total on this $160,000 loan, right? So what is the lesson here? This is the reason why you wanna take good care of your credit score. You wanna be watching things all the time and, um, and challenging things that are incorrect and that kind of stuff, right? So this is why you want to uh, be careful with how you're managing credit. 
So um, what is the effect of um, loan types on your monthly payment? Well, you know, look at this scenario. And this is what you have to be thinking if you're trying to be smart and you can afford things. So right here, this is a 15-year mortgage, same mortgage. The monthly principal and interest payment is uh is sixteen twenty four, so it's a little bit more. Um, hold on, monthly payment sixteen twenty four. Okay, I see what they did. So the total cost of interest here is going to be one hundred and thirty two thousand versus that three hundred three thousand over thirty years. Now, what are you really trying to figure out here? Is it worth it to? Can you afford this extra amount right now, in order to avoid having to pay this? Now depending upon the interest rate it might be worth it for you to make an an additional principal payment it may even be maybe your deal is i have a 30-year mortgage but i'm paying 1624 a month and it still reduces the amount of interest but i like that because if it gets tight and i can't pay the 1624 at least now um i don't have to this month i'll just pay the smaller amount but the idea here and there is there is an interest rate at which it's the same exact thing if you just pay 1624. I don't know what that's going to be, but you go through and figure out what that's going to be once you figure out how to make all these calculations. Okay. Now, in addition to that, everyone wants to own a home. It's the American dream. And I used to, when I was a realtor, I thought, yeah, it really is an American dream. A lot of people right now, wealthy people say it's not the American dream to buy a house to live in. Yeah, you can feel great because it's your house and you can do whatever you want. Um, but what happens when you want to sell it or what happens when you're getting stuck? And also there are other things that are coming up, other costs. Like when you buy this house, there are closing costs. It's not just, hey, here's the house. You have to actually make sure that the title is clean and that it makes that it um, that it can be transferred cleanly to you. Everybody's looking at that stuff. You have to pay points on your mortgage. There are different closing fees and things like that with the mortgage that happen when you close on that house. So when you go to buy a house, you put that. $40,000 down, you still have money to bring to closing. Um, and, and sometimes if you're selling a house, you have to concede as well, right? So you have to take that into consideration. Of course, we have the escrow amount. That's the amount. So when you're paying um, that PITI, the taxes and insurance are taken off of that and they go into a special account because they're only due once a year. And they're paid usually ahead of time. So you have that money by the time taxes are due next year, you have that money built up in an account and they actually make a payment on your, your homeowner's insurance and your, uh, and your um, taxes. And then there's repairs and maintenance. You have to keep that property up, right? So paint wallpaper, what happens when your water heater goes out? What happens when you have a hole in the roof? These are things that you have to take care of. If you're renting, you wouldn't. You just talk to the landlord and he takes care of that. Okay, so now let's get into the math of this. Let's calculate interest, principal, and the new balance after making payments. All right, so we're gonna look at that same, the same loan we've been talking about. He financed 160,000, 9% over 30 years. So we're gonna end up paying 360 payments. We know that the payment is gonna be 188 or 1288, right? So what we have to do is we first say, we know that our principal and interest payment is 1288. But we need to figure out what the principal is or what the interest is so that we can pay our interest first and then the rest goes to um, uh, principal. So let's look at this. Interest is P times R times T, principal times rate times time. Well, we borrowed 160,000. The rate is 9% and time is we're only talking about one month. So this is one over 12. And if you do it backwards, it works, right? So one divided by 12 times 0 0.09 times 160,000 is $1,200. Now I want you to stop and see what we're really saying here. The payment or the interest for one month on that full balance of 160,000 is $1,200. That's the interest. As you get closer to the end of the loan, the interest amount starts going down and the amount of your payment that is principal starts going up. You know, at some point they cross over and you start paying more principal than interest. But now you're paying way more interest than principal because remember our payment is 1288. So if we look at this payment of 1288, this is a principal and interest payment. And we just figured out that the interest is 
that means that our principal reduction, the amount of our loan is gonna go down by only $88. In the beginning of that loan, you are not making very much progress at all. So then what do you do? You take this, $80, this $88 and subtract it from the original loan amount and your new balance is $159, $159,912. So after you make your first payment, you basically still owe $160,000. let us go to our second payment. So now um, our second payment is going to be, we got to figure out interest based upon that new balance, right? So same formula, 9%, 1 12th, because it's one payment out of the 12 payments of the year. So 1 divided by 12 times 0 0.09 times 159.912 is 1199 so our interest is a little bit less this time right but our payment is still 1288 so now we subtract our interest from that and we're we add 66 cents to the interest payment this time so we subtract that from our balance and our new balance is um uh, 159,823,000 over the course of two payments we still basically owe 160,000 dollars how do we combat this? If you have extra money, pay it on your principal. And there are some unique and innovative ways. If you own a house and you're interested in learning some cool things about that, message me like outside of the class and I can help you learn some ways that you can actually reduce the um, your loan very, very quickly. There are some innovative ways of doing it. Uh, you can I can teach you how to do that very, very quickly. And you can reduce not only the amount of time you have this house, uh, this money borrowed for this house, but how much interest you actually end up paying. So this is how it all pans out, right? So we start with 160,000. The interest in that first payment is $1,200, but uh, our payment is 1288. So we only reduce our payment by $88. New balance after the first payment. So it's 88, we reduce it by 88.66 on that second payment, right? And you see how it goes. If you look at a schedule of payments or an amortization schedule, you'll see how it's actually reducing. You'll see how much is going towards principal. And it is a little bit more every month. But see, here's the thing. What would happen if we paid another $100 on this, on this first payment? Then this would be 100, this, the balance would be 159812 which means this would be 812 which means, this amount would be actually less. The interest would be less, which means this would be more and it would reduce the principal of this even more. That's the, why, that's the reason why adding additional uh, interest or principal to your loan dramatically helps you if you can do it. Okay, so that is uh, pretty simple. Nothing really crazy there. Dig in. And as always, if you have any questions, just let me know. Good luck.